my lovely listeners. Welcome back to another episode of DRL, where we're talking everything dating, relationships, and love. I am actually down here in D.C. today. I finally made it out of New York, so I um, thought I'd introduce, or interview a bunch of D.C. folks today. So today I have Janelle with me. Hey, Janelle. How's it going? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really, really well. So what's new with you? Working. Yeah? <laughs> Busy is good, though. Yeah. How do you like living in D.C.? How long have you lived here? Um, so I moved here in 2010 to go to Howard, mm-hmm. um, and I stayed after graduating. Are you single, right? <laughs> I am single. <laughs> so what's dating like been, or what's dating been like here? Um, you know, it's it's really interesting because I feel like there are so many, you know, amazing men and amazing women, and they, we just don't seem to be meeting one another. Okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> everybody's like perpetually single. And like chasing their careers and working on the hill or kind of like me or doing uh, law school and grad school and stuff like that. It's like these people don't seem to be syncing up. It seems like I think um, the women want to, want to meet someone and the men are like. I'm still playing the field. Yeah, I'm like a hotshot, educated black man. I'm going to be single forever. Right. Like I don't I don't <laughs> actually need to settle down. I don't need, I don't this. need this. I'm going to keep this <laughs> as long as I can. Um, so like have you dated online or like how do you meet people? Um, I have dated online, so I've done Tinder and Bumble. Um, I actually just went on a Tinder date. How was that? <laughs> like two weeks ago. Um, it was great, but he said something really offensive over dinner. Like, um, he's a Trump supporter. Like, a, a middle-class black man. Oh, that, well, my next question was going to be, <laughs> obviously, this was a white man, but okay, I see I, I stand corrected. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a Trump supporter. Did you know that prior to the dinner? No. So, like, how did that come out? Because um, I see that as, like, a big revelation. You know what I'm saying? Like, when somebody says that, I'm just like, oh, my God, wh- why would you not have told me that? It'd be like, if you showed up to the date and you're just missing an arm. It's fine that you're missing an arm, but, like, there are certain things that you should tell people about just to, like, avoid the shock and awe factor. Uh, so, um, I think I was talking about um, something having to do with the protests at Howard mm-hmm. or just like things going on on campus. And I explained to him that it all started last year when the secretary of education came to campus for a meeting. And that's how like the protests first started. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he kind of goes off on a tangent about how people need to give Trump and the cabinet a break. Like they just got in, they need some time, like things will work out. Mm. I'm like it's, it's no, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, that was terrible. So I, I left and we hadn't texted. Um, and he actually texted me like two days ago. Wait. So then did he say, did he actually say, you know, I voted for Trump and yes. I'm a Trump supporter. Yes. Okay. <laughs> How did, what did you say to him after he said that? Um, I don't actually think I said anything. <laughs> wow. That's a, that's, um, that, that's a real, that, I think like I might I leave the date. I was expecting it. Yeah. Like, I feel like I was dumbfounded. Like, I was just like, okay. <laughs> Did he give a reason? No. Because again, when you say something like that, like you can't, it's not a casual thing. Like you, I need, I need reasons. I need backups. I need data. <laughs> I, I think I was speechless. I think I was just like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> like, I, wow. Sometimes I feel like when people say like really silly things, I don't need to ask questions. I'm just like, okay, that's, that's enough for me. <laughs> Wow. That's that. So then what happened when he texted? Um, so I initially didn't respond. And he said um, he invited me to this Italian place. That just opened up like a few blocks from here, actually. And I was like, um, you know, I don't have any intentions on going out again. Just like really simple, like nothing disrespectful. Mm-hmm. And he just keeps texting me. And he goes, well, I made the reservation. It's for Saturday. Um, I'll give you two days to change your mind. I think that's enough time. So wait. <laughs> Before he asked you out, he made the reservation and then he texted you and said, I made reservations to this place. Let's go. No. So he was like, uh, let's go out. I'd love to hang out again. And I say, I have no intentions of going out like Mm -hmm. whatever. And then he replies and says, says, well, I just made reservations. I'll see you on Saturday. (laughs) So are you going? No, (laughs) no, (laughs) no, that's done. And it's like, I was with one of my guy friends at the time. You know, wait, pause. You know what he's about to do, right? He since he's already made the reservations, he's just gonna go through his phone until somebody, <laughs> until somebody de- decides yes. to come. Yeah, that's that's what he's gonna do. I no, I was I was with one of my guy friends at the time, and he was like, um, "I like that move." I was like, 
Okay. If the girl already woman, sorry, if the woman already liked you and already yeah, showed cute. interest and is already like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Okay. I want to see where this goes. Then it's cute to be like, <laughs> then I kind of like a take charge man. Then I like it yeah. when a man is like, so I've sent a dress to your house and some shoes and be please ready at be ready for the car at seven and I'll meet you wherever I decide the car's taking you. You know what I'm saying? So like that would have been cute, except for you were like, I'm good. Thanks. There's nothing cute about that. To yeah. Honest. Like you've it's already like said I'm to force interest or force me to come out and I'll pass. Wow. God, I kind of want to meet this guy. What's he doing now? <laughs> <laughs> I just texted him and invited. <laughs> like, would you like to do a podcast? She really can't believe there's a young black man that's a Trump supporter. <laughs> the no, world I needs can, to hear I from me. I can you. introduce you to a few. <laughs> Please do. I'm here all afternoon. <laughs> oh wow. Um, so have you had any promising dates? Yeah, I mean, I meet nice guys. They're usually um, from work events. Mm-hmm. Um, not promising enough to continue like dating them long term. Um, uh, but you know, nice guys are there. <laughs> what are you looking for in a guy? It's like after going through so many like trashy experiences, it's like what, what do I even want anymore? Um, I do want that stand up and take charge kind of guy. Even though in the rest of my life, I'm like stand up and take charge. That's <laughs> like why. That's exactly why you need that guy. Scenario. Um, I need someone that's not afraid to tell me like, Janelle, please like sit down, <laughs> like, please be quiet. Like, right. s- stop talking. Um, I like adventure too. Like I travel a lot. I do a lot of fun things. I need someone that's going to like travel with me and like just do cool stuff. Like I jumped off of the Auckland sky tower for my birthday <sighs> like, two years ago. And that was so fun. I love and that. And so many of my friends were like, are you crazy? Why did you do that? <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's crazy because, um, like, they don't have seasons. They just have wet and dry. Yep. And we went during the wet season. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did, it too. It was raining. And it rained the whole time I was there. <laughs> it was raining yeah. during my jump. <laughs> <laughs> I love tragic. that, though. Did you go there by yourself? No, I went with my friend. Um, oh, but your fitness. friends didn't do it? No, yeah, she didn't do it. Yeah, I, when I went skydiving, <laughs> a friend was supposed to come with me. Yeah. And the morning of, she was like, no, nah, I don't think oh, I could do it. I was like, you realize God. they don't refund you, right? <laughs> that was my whole thing. Like, you can't get your money back, so you might as well go. You might as well do it. And she it. was like, no, I'm, I'm good on losing that 300 I'm like, okay, oh whatever. <laughs> it's too late for me to invite anybody else now, so <laughs> fine. Um, okay, that's cool. I'm liking that. Um, do you find that men are intimidated by you? because you are very take charge and independent and you kind of have your own thing going. Do you find that that's it attracts them or intimidates them? Um, I think both. I think they like it at first. Like they like the idea of it Mm -hmm. and then they're like, okay, this might not be for me. Um, But I think the fact that they do recognize early on that this isn't for them. um, I like that rather than just kind of faking the funk and just suffering or something. So what do they like about the idea versus the reality? Like what can't they deal with, you know, in real time? I'm very opinionated and kind of mean. Like I've been told that like more and more recently. Like I'm kind of mean. What do you mean mean? Recognizing. Like (laughs) (laughs) by mean, do you mean rigid? Yeah. Okay. That's a good word. (laughs) Okay. I mean, the reason that I came up with that word just now is because I think that that's something that I've recognized as an issue with myself uh-huh. is and I've recognized it with a lot of like type A women okay. is that there's um, there's a certain rigidness there. And sometimes the rigidness comes off as, you know, being mean. Yeah. But the rigidness is essentially like, here's the here's what we said. Yeah. Here's the here are the guidelines. <laughs> Let's do it. OK, well, wait, why are the guides li- guidelines not being followed? They were set. Boom, you were boom, sent boom. an agenda. Boom, 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 I don't I don't that. understand what the <laughs> what the misinterpretation is. And that can often come off as being um, inflexible mm-hmm. or um, not having empathy. Yeah. And that's something that I'm I'm really working through because yeah. I've realized that I'm I'm very um, like I like rules and I like structure mm-hmm. and I like order and like I think like if everybody's following the rules and the structure and the order, like there really shouldn't be a problem, what right? Could go wrong, <laughs> but you know we're human, and so things happen. Yeah, and sometimes the the rigidness can be like you're really inflexible, and you're like, 
nope, sorry, that's not the plan. And then oftentimes like throw ideas or people to the wayside because the plan wasn't followed. Like I, I do that. Like I do that to a T and I'm just like, I'm recognizing it now. Yeah. And I'm like, I have yeah. to stop it. Like it, it life isn't so black and white. I like things a certain way. Yeah. And when it's not that way, I'm just kind of unhappy. <laughs> Trust me. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I had a, a, a therapist on the show recently, mm-hmm. a friend of mine, Cynthia, and she uh, showed me this chart and uh, it was just um, destructive ways of thinking was a chart. And okay. one of them was black and white thinking okay. where it's either or everything is it's this or it's that. Yeah. These are the rules, like follow the rules. Yeah. There's no gray These area. Are like the, um, the binaries, right? Like things and we think everything falls into yeah. binaries and, and it doesn't. Right. There's a lot of gray and colorful areas in relationships, especially <laughs> yeah. like it, it, there is no like set of rules that yeah. everybody is going to follow. And yeah, that's like becoming increasingly frustrating to me now that I'm realizing it. Like now that I'm like seeing it in myself, I'm like, oh my God, like I'm a <laughs> nut. <laughs> like I'm a nut with like OCD. Yeah. Like I like things in a certain place and yeah. when they're not in their place, like I like just about go crazy. Yeah. And so I'm just, it's a, it's a daily process to just like <laughs> let go of things yeah, relax that don't bit. matter. Mm-hmm. And my mom always told me, she's like, you're not going to keep that up when you have kids. Like you just can't, <laughs> you cannot do that. Like try it. You can't. Yeah. yeah. No. So maybe that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Have you, rec- have you been told that? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did your last relationship end? What last relationship? Uh, well, when was your last relationship? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, yikes. Um, so I was with someone uh, from my senior year of college uh, for about two years. Mm-hmm. So from around graduation for two years. Um, he wanted to have kids. and he- uh, Right at that point in time? <laughs> Like, was he like, let's go half on a baby right now? Or like, yes. like, really? He yeah, was like so trying to plan for kids right then? Yeah. How old to, was this guy? Um, 28 or 29. Just around that time. Um, I mean, that's not like inappropriately young, but it's still a bit young in the relationship, I think. <laughs> so um, he, he wanted to start talking about kids and starting a family. And this was around the time that he bought a house. So he kept saying, you know, you can spend more time out here if you'd like. And the house is out in the suburbs. And it's just like not not for me at that time. And so I thought since he's talking about having kids, like he's also thinking about like marriage. <laughs> yeah, I would think that what conversation would have occurred before that. It didn't. And it was not in the picture. Did he just want you to be an egg donor? Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> no, he just he uh he wanted to have a kid and wanted to co-parent and wanted to consider getting married later. It was something that had come up like multiple times. So we were together for like two years. So it came up um, maybe at the end of the first year. Um, and I'm thinking, I just like brushed it off. Like it's not so, like, oh, let's have a kid or let's talk about kids or whatever. And like, I didn't think it was serious or like time sensitive for him. Uh, but then it started getting brought up like more and more. And I was like, OK, so we had to like we talked about it over dinner <laughs> like over over food and um at the the breakup was very abrupt i wonder um usually men at that mm-hmm. age don't think like that where yeah. they're just like i just need to have a kid now like yeah. that's kind of like what a 37 year old woman would yeah. do you know or it's just like i just need this right, right now. now like i don't care who it's with i just right now yeah. so like i wonder why he thought like that like why he was so it had to happen so soon you know i think that um you know the same way that we've got that clock ticking that we can hear sometimes i think they have that too it's just not as loud but maybe sometimes there's those moments where they're like okay it's time this yeah. is it i just bought a house i've got a great job this is it wow I went through something kind of similar where I had this like, I don't know. I think maybe I was just lonely, Uh but I was like, I want a kid. And I wasn't, I wasn't seeing anybody at the time. And this was maybe four years ago. So I was 30. I just hit 30. That's what it was. And I was just like, I just, I want a kid. I'm going to start saving up and, you know, for different alternatives (laughs) in case I don't meet somebody. I want a kid. And I, I like, I'm not an animal person. I don't really like, I don't like animals. I don't really mess with them. I don't do dogs. Like I don't do any of it. But all of a sudden I was like, well, I should just get a puppy. And it's like, I don't even like dogs. Why? <laughs> Why would I want this crazy? And I looked house? into it to the point where I like found a dog, yeah. right? And uh 
it's like founded online. It was this guy in like in Wisconsin. I was going to go home to Minneapolis, drive to Wisconsin, pick up this oh dog. My, my apartment didn't allow dogs at the time. So I was going to drop this dog off with my parents. It was a whole thing. And like, <laughs> like, I don't even know what was going on in my well, head. There was a plan behind but, it. But now my family, my family at that point was like, we just thought something was really wrong. Like, and then oh you were trying to gosh. dump this dog on us. Like it was a whole weird thing. Oh I was going through a time, clearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually um, I actually just got a dog. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. What made you want a dog? Um, so I had been talking with one of my friends about getting a dog and splitting custody, <laughs> like sharing a dog. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had been looking for a Boston Terrier uh, for a few months. And then we went to the pound one day or the, the animal rescue, and there was this family there with the dog in the back seat and we were like oh she's so cute and they go do you want her <laughs> it was a boston terrier no well, it was a jack russell terrier. oh okay, okay. Uh, so similar similar size like she's really really small and that's actually that's that's how it happened but he he backed out of it he was like you know what this is <laughs> this is too much <laughs> this is just too much for me but um, I, I took her do so. you want it wow <laughs> Are you sure there's not something like a defective with the dog? <laughs> yeah, like I've had her checked out and everything. That's what I thought for a while. Is that like maybe she's dying or something? Is she broken? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's like super high energy. So I see how like maybe it could be a lot for, you know, for someone. But yeah. Do you feel like this is like training you for motherhood in some ways? Yeah. Because like does your life in a way revolve around it where you're like, yeah. I have to get home at a certain time <laughs> yeah. to like... I've got to walk her. I've got, I've got to go. I can't stay out too late. I've got to wake up early and walk her or let her out the balcony, out, out into the balcony. Like, yeah. Cause guys have told me stories about girls being like, you know, I have to, I have to go home. And I'm like, uh, she just wanted to leave the date, <laughs> but it, it actually is a real thing. Yeah. Like the, okay. Yeah. I mean, and even I want to say I've tried to make plans with someone before and they were like, no, I've got to walk my dog. <laughs> <laughs> actually. I remember one night, Chris and I were at a bar uh-huh. in Philly and this girl was sitting next to us. We started talking to her and we're, she's just like having her drink. And she's like, well, it was really nice meeting you guys. I've got to get home and, um, you know, like play with my cats. And I was like, is that some sort of weird, like, is that code for something? And she's like, no, like I, I have, I have like two cats. And then Chris goes, you, you have more than two cats. I bet you have more than two cats. And she was like, no, I just have two cats. And then, well, then there's a couple strays in the neighborhood oh that like God. come by we just got she literally has 10 cats like but that's what we ended up discovering it's, it's a big part of her life right, like, right. she's stable. like i have to go home like it's really great meeting you guys but like i gotta go be with my cats <laughs> but it was funny because chris called it he was like she has what she has more than two cats uh, and then and then she got into talking about her cats yeah. and we were just like wow. it's a ton of them. <laughs> yeah just don't get more than one dog okay no it's just one okay just one is good because she um when she's restless like when i don't go home to yeah her, if i'm like late or something and she like goes in the house somehow this like just happened like there was poop on the wall <laughs> like up on the wall she like smeared it yes. like a badass kid yes oh no yeah so she's got i would have i, I would have had to give her back <laughs> She's got some uh, behavioral issues. See, I would have literally put her back in the car, waited for somebody to say she was cute, and then been like, you want her? (laughs) (laughs) And that's the story of that. That's why why they were giving her up. They were sick of of, uh, poop all over their living room walls. Like, that's why. (laughs) Yeah, not easy to clean. Oh, no. (laughs) No, Yeah, I would have died. I'm slightly OCD, (laughs) so I would have seen that and then just been like, uh... Sorry, yeah, you have to is, go. This is this. I can't do this. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. So, good dates in DC? In terms of, like, what was the best date you've been on here? Uh, we did a scavenger hunt on the National Mall. Like, he planned it? Yeah. Like, he hid stuff and. Well, so um, he, like, sent me these text messages at like 7 a.m. Mind you, we didn't actually have plans. Um, so if I was busy, like, oh, well. Um, and he sent me like hints to each location. So I would go there and I'd say I figured it out. I'm at the Lincoln Memorial and then four more pictures. I mean, all this stuff is like walking distance. So it's kind of cute. And so I'm like hopping to places. It was like three different locations. And then he said, um, I think he gave me another location. and He was there and he had like mimosas. That is so cute. It was really cute, yeah. 
Oh my was, god, I love that. We ended Ooh. by we ended by the reflecting pool um, outside the outside the Lincoln Memorial, like the water. That is an amazing yeah. day. It's really cool. I'm gonna write that one down. Mimosas and he had like chocolate and stuff. <laughs> That's so cute. That was really cute. So what I happened? Mean, with- I like in turn like used that and like did that with someone. <laughs> so what happened with that guy? Um, you know, this is gonna sound crazy, but I think he was married. <laughs> That's how he knew all the cute stuff to do. <laughs> I think he was married because um like we were, you know, getting closer and spending more time together, but I noticed that we would either always just go out in the city or he would like come to my house. And um one day I was like Oh, I, I knew he lived out in Maryland. So I was like, oh, I'm driving out into Maryland. I'll swing by and say hi. And he was mm-hmm. like, no. <laughs> no, don't come by. And then uh, there was a second incident where, uh, what was it, Memorial Day or something? One of those days where, like, people have cookouts. Right. Um, and he was like, no, I've got a ton of family o- over. You can't come. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just going to How long had you guys that. been seeing each other at that point? Um, like two months. Like early, but like not enough really. time where it's not awkward if I <laughs> yeah. stop by. Um, so yeah, I, I had assumed that he was married, and that was that. But I did get a good date idea. And did you it. ask him? No. Why I didn't you ever stopped. ask him? I just stopped texting because he kept he kept um, just giving me reasons where I couldn't come over his house. So it's like either he lived at home with his parents or he was living with a woman. <laughs> How are your internet research skills? Because then I would have gotten on Google and I'd have been like, okay, I found his let's address. Let's do this. I found his address and like his voter registration stuff. <laughs> That's it. So there was no record of a wife? No. Might have been his parents then, which isn't so bad. I mean, he, he didn't. I, I don't know. I, th- I think he was married. I, I, I like felt that. Like, I think he was married or like a live in girlfriend, maybe. Damn. I don't know. That sucks. Like, I mean, maybe he was homeless. Like maybe that's what it was. Like he just didn't have a stationary place to live. I mean, it was there was a a real issue though. <laughs> I mean, I've I've heard of people like homeless dating, like like not necessarily having a steady place. So it's like they yeah. date and then stay with the the people oh, they yeah, date. That's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. But I've I'm like I don't know how people don't recognize it. Like if you're at my house for more than a day, I'm like, when you heading out? <laughs> <laughs> so what you got to do <laughs> yeah like what you got going today <laughs> like you're not just gonna be posted up at my house I, it's literally a day for me before i'm yeah. like i gotta also, go um i mean depending on how much time we spend together i also don't think there's a reason for you to be showering at my house <laughs> generally not yeah i mean unless we're like together and we're spending like week a week together or something um you can go <laughs> You can go like you don't need to leave things here. I think we see things in a lot of, in a lot of similar ways. <laughs> you don't need to shower at my house. Yeah, you kind of you could. Yeah, go do you go do your thing. <laughs> I, I could see that. It's funny because I've always been like that until I met Chris. Like I've always been like I'm just now recognizing my ways, but I've yeah. always been very just like come and go, do you boom, boom, goodbye? Boom. But yeah, now I'm I'm just I'm just more like. I see it Mm -hmm. and it's not always good. So I I think like you should start maybe recognizing it. Yeah, I get it. I was there, but I'm just saying like, you know, the rigidness sometimes you can let go of it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, so one of my guy friends had like some really harsh words for me this week. What did he say? I actually invited him to come here. Um, So I was actually, it's, it's who was sitting with me when I got the text, like, See you there. See you on Saturday. Uh. He was like, you're such a bitch. You're an egotistical bitch. <laughs> Damn. Okay. It really caught me off guard. I was like, speechless, like how I was speechless. Right. Guys said he was a Trump supporter. I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, you're so, what did he say? Like, he was like, um, you just have your list of things that you want. And that's that. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I get it. I a hundred percent get it, but I just don't ever want you to cut off or block certain people based on something that's on the list Mm -hmm. that might be really trivial. Like obviously like there's, there's standards Mm -hmm. that just shouldn't be adjusted and you know, should be kept. But then there's probably things on your list that are just like, 
is that going to make a difference in your happiness? Yeah. That that's where you can draw it, right? I think like the tough part about it is that I don't feel like I have a, I feel like I have like such I just feel like the bar is kind of low. <laughs> like, like I have things that I like. Like, um, obviously, I have to be attracted to you. I want someone that motivates me Mm -hmm. and inspires me. Like, I'm tired of guys saying, like, wow, like, you motivate me. Like, I want to be better because you're doing all these great. Like, why can't I meet someone that I want to be better for, like, that motivates me? Um, And then the adventurous piece. Like, we have to go out and do things. Like, don't come to my house and sit down and and smoke. Like, I don't want to do that. Right. So it's like, I can't even think of like things that I have, like you got to dress this way. Got to do that. Got to do that. It's like, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. I get it. (laughs) But maybe it's like sometimes when a powerful presence is around you, you might feel like, wow, there's not room for me to, perform or be helpful or Mm -hmm. or contribute Mm. right so i'm not advocating for the the damsel in distress by any means right because i don't think that that should be something that intimidates men but i am realizing more and more that everybody needs to feel needed yeah right yeah oh my gosh i have such a good example for this what so like that my my boyfriend from college the one that (laughs) wanted to have kids so like uh, right after graduation, when my roommate moved out and I took over the lease, I had to buy all this new furniture. And I was in a three-story walk-up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had this stuff delivered. And I was downstairs. It was like 10 boxes. And like I'm home all day. And I texted him. I was like, hey, uh, my delivery just came. And he was like, leave it. I'll get it when I get home from work. Just like boxes and stuff. Um, and I just took the time and I took it upstairs myself. Because you wanted it done right then and there. Yeah. Because you were home. And you're like, and let me just unpack it. Yeah. When he came after work, he looked so like disappointed and just kind of upset he was like why didn't you leave it for me to get it and I was like because I had the time to do it like what why wouldn't I do it like I need I wanted my lamps I want my dishes out and the look on his face was just so like because really he bad. probably felt like yet another yet again another time where it's like yeah you could be here I guess but like I really don't like need you <laughs> I got it upstairs all by myself you can go home now <laughs> that's the plight of the independent woman yeah it's like you actually don't you don't need a man yeah. Like, there's nothing that you can't do on your own, but eventually, like, we all do, not eventually, every day, we all need that love, and we need that support, and we need that companionship, so it's like, I may not literally need you to, like, bring these boxes up the stairs for me, like, I could do it myself or hire somebody to do it, but people really need to feel needed, particularly men, Absolutely. and so it's like, wherever you can create a space where Mm -hmm. it's like, hey, I need you to do x y and z like it's Even really important to do that as, like opening a salsa jar like could you can you do this for me? yeah can you help me with this <laughs> that's something that i actually practice every yeah. day like believe it oh or not gosh. it's like a daily like practice Dang. for me to to really be like don't do that just ask him to do that one of the things that like chris always points out to me mm-hmm. is i'll ask him to do something mm-hmm. and then i'll mean that right right that second now. like right, right now. now and so i'll be like hey can you like take out the trash and then i'll go like shower or do what i'm doing and, it's, it's and then there. if the trash isn't taken out i don't even like you know be like hey take the trash can you take the trash out? i don't say it again i'm just like whatever i need this done right now it's gonna take me two seconds and then i take it out it. Yeah. and then he's like well why didn't you let why didn't why did you take out the trash well because it needed to be taken out and i'm right here and the trash is you know yeah 10 feet away so i took it out right. like no big d- and i think of it as like no big deal. Mm-hmm. But the deeper message is you asked me to do something. Right. I said I would do said thing. You didn't believe that I would do said thing. That's the key. Like, right. So you did, you did the thing. Mm-hmm. And so like it, it all, it's a little thing and it doesn't yeah. feel big, but it's like delivering a message of a lack of trust in, in be- or a lack of belief right. in people saying and people doing what they said they were going to do. Right. And and that's how, whether you believe it or not, that's how you're internalizing it where it's like, I asked him to do that thing and then he didn't do the thing. And you know what? I just got to do the things on my own yeah. where it's like, maybe that's not the deal. Maybe the deal was there's a communication issue. Maybe you should have said, Hey, can you take the trash out? Like in the next five minutes, if yeah. that's what you really wanted. Right. Because now it's just like, well, I just cut you out of the picture completely yeah. and like really didn't even need you to do it. Don't even know why I asked because right. I ended up doing it. Yeah. 
But this is a daily thing for me. Like I'm learning this more and more. And it's so it's like the smallest little things Mm -hmm. where it's just like, well, why didn't you just wait for me to do it? Or why didn't you just tell me to do it again? Because I'm so used to doing like everything on my own anyway. And I'm like, I mean, I really need you to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's crazy. I like that exercise. Yeah. Just saying that one thing, one thing a day, one thing a day. It really, it makes a difference. difference. And you don't like men think about like they take it so personally. Like I wouldn't necessarily take it personally if you were like, "Hey, take out the trash," and then you did it because I didn't do it in the five minutes. Right. I'd have been like, hmm, "I guess you needed it done quicker." Whatever. <laughs> and, but men take that really personally, especially when they're with somebody mm-hmm. who's very independent yeah. and does a lot of things on their own anyway. Mm-hmm. And it's it's it creates a divide more so than you than you would think in the moment. Yeah. No, I totally get it. Yeah. So I guess make a man feel needed. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm working through it too. <laughs> it's rough. It's not easy. It's not. It's really not, especially when like you know that you can do everything or feel like you can do everything, or or even like raised to feel like you can do everything. Yeah, yeah. Like that's a big part of it for me. Like, do you feel in some ways that you take pride in like telling a man or having him believe like mm-hmm. you know you're wanted but you're not needed. Cause I, I did, I certainly do. I think so. It's, I think, um, it's not necessarily something I'd ever say, but like, but you think it, yeah, (laughs) you think it. And it's like, I know that also they can notice it. Like it's, it's easily noticeable. Right. And there's a certain pride in it. There's a certain pride in actually need you. Right. And, and I need you to be okay with that. Like (laughs) I know, like, especially for the guy that Mm -hmm. might be used to like, being a provider or a caretaker or whatever, like the second he meets you, it's like, you want him to know, like, I'm not that chick just so you know, like it's cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, you could do you, yeah. but like, I'm not that chick. Like I don't need you around. If you leave tomorrow, you better believe I'm going to be good. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to be more than good. Bye. Don't think that your presence or lack of it is going to make any difference in my world. Like I'm good. I took so much pride in that for some yeah. reason there was something about me and I thought it was a compliment to tell a man, Oh, I, I don't need you. Yeah. I want you, I want you to be here, but I don't need you. Like yeah. it's, it's, I could a, see, I could see how that could feel like giving someone a compliment. Like I don't actually need you to be here, but I do want you here. Right. Cause it feels but either way if you go like it's okay. Right. Cause it feels like, well, you know, like I don't need anything. I don't need you for my yeah. survival. Like, so I'm not I'm keeping you around for that. I genuinely complete. want you, which is why you're here, which is the yeah. only reason you're here. Yeah. But everybody needs to feel needed. Yeah. Like if you had a job and you showed up and they were just like, you know, your role's not like not really necessary, you know, like we, you're here, but it's Fun not really necessary. At, but, but you know, at any moment we could fire you, like <laughs> just cause. <laughs> but but we like you, so you know we let you stay. You can stay, I guess. Right? It doesn't like who wants that? Like who who actually wants to, like show right, up somewhere right. and feel like I'm not needed not here? Essential. Yeah, like my role is just like what it is. Yeah. And that's that's the message that it sends oh to a man. Gosh. Like I, I'm just now. This is such a revelation. I'm like, just honestly. now. Yeah, I'm just now like understanding how how deep it runs. You know, like men and everybody actually really yeah. just need to feel like needed. They play a role here, and that role is important. Right. Like you know, moms they go through like when their kids graduate and they leave. Yeah. Like they go through a whole thing because yeah. they're just like well, that was like my role for so long and now I'm not needed. Like who am I or what am I? And, and it's a big, it's a big, it, it's a big void. Yeah. So imagine that just in a relationship, like yeah. every day when it's like, it, it just is the way it is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Speaking of, um, so like my mom, when I left, uh, for college, uh, my niece still lived at home for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and when my niece got older and she didn't need like a day to day caretaker, my mom moved to China. <laughs> my mom lives in China. She she lives there and she teaches English. And like that was so drastic. Like when she left, she was like she needed something new. She needed a new life. And she's like over there and they love her. And she's like a local celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Make no, you a celebrity overnight. Because she, <laughs> she's like the, they're, she's like the first black person a lot of them have met. So. <laughs> That's funny. How long has she lived there? No, she went in this past August. And yeah, had so she ever been new. to China or just no, like uh, my mom's half Chinese and that was like always a thing for her. She wanted to go. Wow. <laughs> Does she speak like Mandarin or no. anything? No. Does she, she have family she, there? No. 
But she just randomly was like, Sweat. "Yeah, she um, um, she works at a boarding school. She volunteers to teach English." That's dope, though. Yeah, I love it. I just went out there to visit her. I was there for two months. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And she she needed to feel needed again. And the kids love her. And the kids do need her. She's yeah. Like changing their lives. It's amazing. Right. Yeah. Now imagine how she would feel if she were just like at home. And it's like, yeah, everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Nobody actually needs me here. Yeah. It's just like, it makes you feel a little empty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. So I'm going to encourage you to start making men feel needed. I'll now, now, day. wait, let's be clear. Let's be clear. <laughs> not, let's be clear. Not all of them are needed <laughs> and not all of them. Like, don't put on a front if right. somebody's actually not needed. Right. Because there are some people where it's like, literally, you're like a slug on. A, I, no one needs you here. Let's be clear. So not everybody is worth that. Yeah. But there will be somebody that comes along that it's just like. You really, really feel them. You really love them. Yeah. But like you he has to feel needed yeah you know like my the the, my friend that called me a bitch really um I think he gets the brunt of like my like I don't need a man like I don't really need you around here it's it's cool that you come around and we hang out and we can go shop together but I think sometimes he gets the brunt of that like side of me that's kind of like mean and I think I'm gonna practice with him yeah (laughs) and honestly like if you really think about it there are probably mm-hmm. things that could be taken off of your plate yeah. that, you, you, that you can do. We all know you can do it, right. but there are things that could be taken off of your plate and there are people around you that are capable of taking those things off your yeah. plate. If you just like let go yeah. and, and share those things and they want to do those things and they want to exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like it's funny. Cause as I'm telling you this, I'm like, yeah, yeah, girl. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I'm like evaluating things like in my head on my day to day or like things that I do weekly or just even regularly that someone else really could do. Like right. Someone else could do this. And would like doing it. Yeah. But there's, you're holding on to that, like that pride nice. and that ego of I could do it all myself. <laughs> there, there's a pride in that. Yeah. There's a pride. And, and I think especially like today, mm-hmm. Like there was women didn't always have that sort of power. Yeah. You know, there was a time where it's like you could do nothing without a man because yeah. that's the way society that's was, set, was up. set up. Yeah. So it was literally like at one point, like women couldn't drive themselves, yeah. you know, and you had to have a man. So to get literally from point A to point B, a man had to take you there. Yeah. There were times in history where it's like you had to be escorted by a man everywhere. Yeah. There's still some countries like that. And so it's, it's like expressing this liberation is great, mm-hmm. but in some ways, like, us independent girls have taken it too far, too far, yeah. too far. <laughs> or it's, it's, and it's not necessary. Yeah. It's not. We do need each other. You do. Yeah. You do. Like, you know, it's like, I don't need a man, but I sure want one for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> There's like the episode of um, Sex in the City where Samantha's like trying to hang up a curtain rod or something and she just can't do it. <laughs> and she's like, I don't need a man to do this. <laughs> actually, actually you do. Oh, God. And I think there is like something to be said for, obviously we're not still in the same roles where it's like, you know, a man goes out and hunts and a woman (laughs) is gathering and like obviously we're not in you know still living in ancient history but i think that there is something to be said for gender roles and adhering to those in some ways you know what i'm saying like it is sexy as hell when you do see a man like chopping some wood (laughs) not that i not that i see this on a daily (laughs) somebody's not building me a log cabin and chopping wood in the process but but yes but there there that is sexy like there is something just very appealing about it i don't know what it is and i don't know why (laughs) but but there is something just like seeing a man like do some labor and like sweating and like it is just like huh you know, and there is something for a man about uh-huh. seeing a woman like make a meal yeah. or like interact with the children. That Hold is the baby. The, and yeah, the baby that that is like instinctively yeah. like Do hot thing that's caretaking. Yeah. Right. Right. And so I, I think like as much as we can, mm-hmm. like in our daily independent lives, yeah. I think as much as we can like get back to those things yeah. and like apply those things like. I think everybody will be better off, but we've just gotten to a place where it's like, 
I don't need a man to do this. I don't need a woman to do this. And then it's like, we don't need each other no more. (laughs) I think that the hard part about it, though, sometimes is that men want women to fall into their their gender roles. But (laughs) a lot of men are not in in their roles, meaning um, they refuse to provide or just don't want to. Um, And I think I see that a lot in, in my age bracket. They don't. Mm-hmm. They're, they're big on the the go Dutch thing, and they're you can take the bill. <laughs> like, let me like ask you this: stuff like that. I agree with you. Yeah. Let me ask you this: so let's say you're on a second date okay. with a guy who you like, okay. and you're at dinner. Mm-hmm. You, when you guys went out on the first date, he paid. Yeah. Um, it's the second date. Let's say it's a really nice restaurant. So let's say the bill is, I don't know, two fifty. Okay. Right. Do you? The bill comes. What do you do? Um, if he invited me um, and he chose the location, I'm going to assume that he's paying. But if we made plans and I chose the location, I would probably pay. So let's say it was a situation like, hey, yeah, you know, uh, you're like, oh, I work. I'm, I'm, I work on, you know, New York Ave or whatever. Yeah. I don't know the D.C. streets <laughs> like that. <laughs> Wherever yeah. we are. K Street. And oh, OK, yeah, I'm near there. OK, have you heard about this spot? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been there. Oh, yeah, I love that spot. Let's be there. So let's say it was okay. really just a mutual, okay. like we mutually picked the place because it was convenient for the both of us. Yeah. The bill comes. What do you do? He pays. Okay, good. Because he's, he's cognizant of um, the price. The prices. Do you offer at all? No. You don't? No. Okay, that's good. I do. If I have cash on me, I'll offer to leave the tip. Okay. Because the only reason I ask that <laughs> is because <laughs> sometimes we do things that aren't in our favor in terms of what we actually want. Right. So one of the things I always did was fake reach for the bill, not even <laughs> fake reach. I think it was uh, like, I really meant it. Uh-huh. Right. But then if the guy was just like, Oh, okay. Like, all right. <laughs> and, and didn't even think twice yeah, about it. I'm like, it. um, <laughs> you didn't want to offer at least. <laughs> so, but the thing, it's confusing because yeah. it goes against what I actually wanted, mm-hmm. which was what I wanted mm-hmm. was for you to be the man. And I say that with finger quotes right. because that's not necessarily how it is. And that's not necessarily what everybody wants. Yeah. But I would want on the first couple of dates, particularly if I like somebody for them to just kind of like whisk me off my feet. <laughs> but because of the way that I think, mm-hmm. It doesn't let me accept that all the way. Yeah. So because of like, I'm like, well, I don't need this man thinking that, you know, I'm out here just trying to get a free meal off yeah. him because I need him like that. You know, I have my own money. <laughs> I have my own job. I actually probably get paid more than you. Like those are the sorts of thoughts that would right. start going through my head. And so I'd be like, you know what? Let me just, let me just, yeah. and I'm perfectly willing, but I guess an offering mm-hmm. that's me asserting that I don't actually need this. Right. Thank you though. And if he doesn't then counter that, then I'm like, oh, you're just like not a man. You're not going to be a man. Oh, okay. You know what? I don't need that. I definitely <laughs> don't need that. You know? Okay. Thanks. Thanks. But no thanks. And it creates this confusion yeah. within myself and within yeah. the other person because it's like, I'm denying the things that I want. I wanted you to go hard and like yeah. be extra and fight to give me the thing that I want. <laughs> like- playing non-existent game yeah and 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 it's really just silly and one of the things i'm learning to do is just say yes to the things i want and no to the things i don't so if i don't want to get the bill because for whatever reason i feel like i shouldn't have to either because you invited me out or because i just don't want to or because i feel like i want you to be a gentleman then i just don't even offer yeah and and that took work like that took actual practice Mm -hmm. to not because i've i've literally been out with guys and i've liked them (laughs) And then that same situation has happened where they've been like, uh, oh, I'm like, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get this one or I'll get, I'll get half. Oh, don't ever let a guy tell me on an early date, let's go Dutch. You know what I would do? I literally, no, I would be like, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll get it. And that's that. Then I'll pick up the whole bill and never talk to you again. That's what I would have done. That's it. Because I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't need you to get it. I could have afforded it. In fact, I'll get your meal because you're, mm, you're mm. welcome. Yeah. I don't need this. And so, but it was just all a, a confusing game. Yeah. And I'm really just learning like 
say yes to the things you want and no to the things you don't. And like, Stop yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And so I'm just like, so, you know, now sometimes when the bill comes, I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, I really want it. I actually really want to do this. And sometimes most of the time I'm like, yeah, I don't. Yeah, and then I, I just sit there and then I say, thank you. I just say, thank you, which ha- has been a work yeah. in progress for me. Thank you for lunch. Thank you for dinner. Thank you for getting. Yes. Together. Yes. Thank you for picking me up. Yes. <laughs> like, thank you. Because honestly, a lot of men that have come on the podcast and I've asked them what they wish women would do more of. Okay. It's actually just he's, they're like just saying thank you. Really? So they really just want to feel like appreciated for the things that they did Good to know. Yeah. So it's just saying thank you is enough Practicing sometimes. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, don't fake reach. But I'm glad you weren't doing that to begin <laughs> yeah, with. No. That that was me. <laughs> that was just me projecting no. my my issues on you. <laughs> I bet she does. This. I bet she fakes reach. <laughs> oh wait, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I'm trying to figure. I'm understand what you're looking for in a man, so okay. that so that if I meet somebody, I will send them your way. <laughs> so you said adventurous. Yes. Um. What was, the, what was the first one? You said something before adventurous. Uh, someone that motivates me. Yes, yeah, someone that motivates you, adventurous. And, and usually what? that means someone that's passionate about what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, just passionate about their career, passionate about starting a business, passionate about playing soccer <laughs> as a hobby. I don't know. Just passionate about something and really going after that. Right. Um, yeah, because I'm inspired by that. How old are you again? 25. Would you date older? Yeah, I usually do date older. <laughs> like 10 years or how, how much older would you go? So the oldest guy that I've ever dated was 46. Oh, wow. Yeah. How was that? Um, well, I could tell you're more mentally mature than 25. So, yeah, I mean, it was it was decent. Um, he was a deacon. A what? <laughs> a deacon. Oh, I, I, I thought you said I f- couldn't figure out if you said vegan at first. And I was like, I mean, that's not bad. A lot of people are going that way. <laughs> Like in a church. <laughs> yeah. At a Seventh-day Adventist church, he was a deacon. Wow. What was yeah. that like? Um, he was great. His family was from uh, the Virgin Islands, mm-hmm. which I lived in the Virgin Islands as a child. Um, so we had like little things that were cute that we clicked on. And I used to make age jokes all the time. But um, he wasn't feeling the age gap. Like I didn't care. Like I, I was indifferent. But he was like, this is too much. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I um, what, Have you seen the show Greenleaf? Yes. So I didn't grow up in a very religious household. Yeah. So there's just a lot of like religious education that I missed along the way. Yeah. And a lot of it comes from TV. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I started watching Greenleaf and I was like, oh, this, uh, uh, this is crazy. <laughs> this, these church people. <laughs> right. So, so now if I met a deacon, I'd be like, I saw Greenleaf. <laughs> 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 that's funny oh <laughs> I've educated myself via television thank you very much I know what you're about <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I need to stop getting my knowledge from TV on the things I don't understand oh my gosh <laughs> okay yeah. well if I um, if I meet the right person I will definitely okay. send them your way okay Especially with your newfound knowledge of knowing a man is ne- needs to be needed, needed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. This was thank fun. Thank you. Thank you for inviting I, me. I feel like I see a lot of me in you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, this was fun. This is very revealing. Yeah. I'm like a psychic in a way. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> so can people reach out to you on Instagram or anything Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. What's uh, your Instagram? I'm at X. At- I'm at XOXO Janelle, XOXO J E N E L L E. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and please reach out to me. Tell me what you think about today's show. If you're struggling with any independence issues of your own, <laughs> you know, reach out. Let me know. Let's connect. Uh, you can always reach me at Tanisha Wood on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And thank you for listening today. Until next time, wish me love. Hello again, my lovely listeners. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode of DRL. If you like the show, be sure to go on iTunes and leave a rating and also write a review. And don't forget to share with your friends and tell them all about DRL. Thank you so much for supporting.